It is possible to build a professional Python web app or Python API using Bottle. The only thing you need to know is how to split each of those routes into individual files so you can have a very maintainable system. Let me teach you how to do that. And if you want to get the code, look at the video description. There's a link to my GitHub repository. Create a folder in your computer anywhere you want and call it anything you want to call it. I call it routes. Go ahead and open the terminal. And the first thing we're going to check is which version of Python we have installed in our computer. So I will do pi dash dash version. If you're running a different computer that's not Windows, maybe the command is going to be pi3. Press enter and I have version 3a3 installed. Now that we have that, we are going to download the libraries that will allow us to create the virtual environment. So we say py, the flag dash m, vm, that will be the virtual environment, and then we do the dot. The dot just means that we're going to download the needed files and folders inside the routes folder. So the dot always points to the latest folder in the prompt. Press enter. This will take some seconds. Folders will appear on the left side hand and some files will also be part of those folders. Once that's downloaded, we can start the virtual environment. To run the virtual environment, I do something really simple. I press the letter S that will point to the scripts folder. So I press tap and then that gets auto completed automatically. And then I press the letter A and then I press tap and that gets auto completed automatically. So I'm pointing to the script folders, scripts folders, and then the activate file that will run the virtual environment. I press enter and now you can see that routes appear on the left side of the prompt and that just means that we're inside the virtual environment. If you want to see what files we have inside this environment, you can do a pip list and you can see that I have only the pip library and the seba tools by default. You may get this warning if you want to get rid of it, you can just highlight it as I did it, copy and paste it, and press enter. This will upgrade the PIP or PIP command for you. It takes some seconds, so let's just wait. Done. Once that is done, and we are inside the virtual environment called routes, we are going to, just to show you again the PIP list, we are going to download bottle. So to install and run bottle, we're going to say pip install bottle. And before I run it, I want to show you what I have on the left side hand inside the lips, inside the lib folder. You can see there's no bottling here, but when I run the command and I press enter, this will download the bottle file and it will appear right there. You can also do this manually if that's what you want just have the bottle file there inside the lib. So now that this virtual environment is running, we're going to go ahead and download the code for from GitHub so we can tweak it and make it more professional. In the video description, you have a link to this repository. Make sure that you open it and you will have this file called server.py. Click on it, copy all the code from it, all these, copy, and now move to VS Code, create the file called server py and paste the code. So it will look like that. Make sure that you save the file, of course. Now that you have the code ready in your computer, open the terminal again and we are going to run this server.py file. So we say py server.py. Let's run it. 
I will explain the code to you in a second. Let's just first run the server and test it. Let's go to Postman. And now we're going to point to this localhost port 80 to see what we get from it. Let's create a new tab, localhost, and send the request. You can see that I get index out of it. If we look at the code, we can, by the way, close the terminal. It will still be running the server. We just say that we imported from bottom run, which is this function. And then we say that we're running on localhost port 80. Debug means true. That allows us to get some feedback if something goes wrong. And then reloaded true means that every time we save this file, it will automatically reload the server for us. <clears throat> so we we'll always have the latest changes. When we go to Postman and we point to localhost and we get the index out of it, that just means that this home route is going to run this function. You can call this function anything you want, and it is just going to return index. And this get keyword is included in this import, therefore we can use it. If we change index to capital index, for example, we save it, we send the request again. Now we can see that the response is capitalized. If we look at a post route, we're using the function post, we can see that I'm using it in this route in line number 17. If we want to respond with something specific, we can include the response function and you can see that I am responding with an status 200 and I'm even able to tweak the response content type to be an application JSON. So you will see how I use this in a second. Let's create the first individual route for this home route, which is quite simple at the moment. You can see that this function is called render index. Therefore, I'm going to create a new file and I will also call it render index.py. The naming of it does not matter. So you can call it anything you want. Take the route that you have here, cut it or comment it out up to you. I will just cut it and I'm going to paste it inside its individual file. So right now we have this file that is going to be doing a get or responding to a get request. What we do is we copy also line number one and we paste it inside this newly created file. From bottom, we are not going to import run anymore because the run was the command to run the server. We don't need it. We do need a get because we have a get in there this is not a post route, therefore we don't use the post. And since we're not going to tweak the response, we're not going to use this response object. We can save this file and this is the render index route. So as you can see, we don't have the route here anymore, but if we want to use it, we can even just do this import render index.py. So we are pointing to this file. You don't need a PY. You just say import render index, which is this file. Save it. Make sure both files are saved. And now we're going to move to Postman and see if the route still works. Send the request. You get a 200. If we make a change in the render index route, let's call it index test. Save it. Let's move to Postman and send the request. Now you can see that we moved successfully the first route. Let's go to the second route. The second route is for the get users. Copy the code for the route. Create a new file. Call it anything you want. Now I'm going to show you that I call it something differently here. I will call it users get all dot py. Now, the reason I want to call it users get all is because I am pretending that this route will get me all the users. Save it. And what we need to do, paste first, of course, the code. 
the code that we copy from there. We don't need this code anymore. And what we are going to do now is we are going to import this users get all. We pass this render index, we don't need it. Import users get all and that's it. Save it. We're not going to test this route just now because I want to show you the potential errors we can get into. From the server, copy line number one, and again, just paste it inside the users get all. From bottle, we're going to import not run. We do a get because we see it here. We don't need a post and we don't need a response from now. We're not going to test it just yet. Now let's test the last route. This route is to save a user. That's why we use a post for, so we can save, we can create elements. I will cut this code. I'm going to create a new file. And now I'm going to call it userscreate.py. You can call this anything you want. Paste it. Now the reason I call it userscreate, users get all, is because when you build an API and you have a lot of different endpoints, you probably want some order. You could also put this inside a folder just for the users, but, but for the simplicity of the video, I just call it and put it inside the root folder. So users create, users delete, users update, that could be your routes. The same thing with tagline number one, we copy, we paste it, and now we have to import not run. We're doing a post, not a get. So the get goes away. We leave the post. And as you can see in this route, I'm using the response object. Therefore, we leave it there. If you don't have this response, it will give you an error. Save it. And now we need to import also the users, the last route that we did, create, right? Import users create. Now you can see how the server file became a really tiny file and all the routes, each of them is in the corresponding individual file. Now you have a fully maintainable system. You can see that it makes a lot of sense to read this. Once we have done that, we're going to check the user script route it is going to be a post pointing to users. Let's go to Postman. Let's create a new route. It's going to be a post, localhost, pointing to users. Let's send the request and let's see what the server responds with. Nothing. Let's move back to the server and let's check the terminal. As you can see, I had some issues before at some point because I was running without the get and all that. But now that we know how to rerun it, we just say run the server again. Now the server is running fine. We are going to test again the user create route. Send the request and you can see that we get ID one. Let me show you why the ID one we have here. That's because we pretend that we connect to the database, pretend that we have a command that insert the user into a table or into a collection that's a new document. We execute it. Obviously all this code it should be inside a try except. And then eventually we get the newly created user's ID. We set the response code to be a 200. By default, it will be a 200. I just want to show you that we can set it. We also tell the client that we're going to respond with JSON Actually, it's JSON strings. It looks like JSON is just text, but it could, it could and it can be converted to JSON. And then I respond with this ID one. If I take this line away, comment it out, save and resend the request, you will see that this is interpreted as text, not, not as JSON. And if I put this line back and I send the request, this is interpreted as JSON. So now that we have these two routes created, I'm going to show you what happens with this users get all route. Let's open it. This route is a little bit more complex because if I point to 
users doing a get, you will see what happens. I'm going to create a new round, get, that's the HTTP method, localhost, forward slash users capitalized, send it, and then you can, you can see that we have an internal server error. And the reason we're getting that is because this array, which contains JSON objects internally, cannot be passed in the response to the client because that is not possible. We need to pass only text. That's the only thing we can do. So what I will do is from, I will just import JSON. And once I have JSON, I can just do json.dom string, that will be a dump s, and this should convert my response into text. Save it. Try to send the response, the request again. And now you can see that this is responding with text that is looking like an array with JSON objects internally. If you want to convert this into a JSON-like response so the client can use it or parse it as JSON, we are going to say that we want to also import response. And since we want to send the response as JSON, we can say that the response.content type is going to be, let's do application forward slash JSON. You don't need to set the char set, but I will do it, UTF-8. I think that will run, save it, send it. And now you can see that the client, in this case Postman, did interpret the response as an array with JSON objects in it. To resume what we have done, you can see that I split it every single route into an individual file. Now it makes a lot of sense, it's very maintainable, and obviously you will have to play with the naming convention to adapt it to your system. So now you know that you can have a huge system built with bottle. Thank you for watching this video.